welcome back to NCT Networks. In today's video, we will be discussing on a new series that we have just started, networking interview questions and answers with basic to advanced. So first of all, we will start with the basic topics and then we shall move ahead to uh, you know the more advanced ones. So what we are going to do is we shall discuss each topic in depth, right, from basic to advanced, and this is the first part of the series. So let's get started. So in this particular series, uh, per video, we'll have about five questions. Okay. So the first question in this series is in this particular episode on this particular video is what is the OSI layer, right? And explain the layers and functions. So basically, this is a pretty, pretty uh, basic interview question that will be asked basically, you know, mostly from the freshers or uh, guys who have little experience, but it can also be asked from advanced level uh, interview uh, perspective, wherein if you are an experienced candidate, even then this shall be asked. So how do we answer it? What do we understand? So what is the OSI model? Right. So first of all, what you're going to say is the OSI model is open system interconnection model is a conceptual basic framework that standardizes the functions of telecommunications or computing systems in terms of seven abstraction layers. So what we can understand through this is basically it simplifies the network communication with seven layers. Okay. Open system intercommunication, right? Interconnection, I'm sorry. And with seven layers, <clears throat> right? Now, what are these seven layers? So we'll go from actually physical. Okay. First, the first one is physical. Right. Then we have data link. Or what we shall do is we'll discuss about practical scenario. In practical scenario, what we will discuss about it is how the layer is actually formed. So the first one is application. Right. Then we have presentation. Session. Okay. Then we have transport. After transport, we have a network layer. After network, again, we have data link, DL, and then we have physical. So once any packet is formed, okay. So from A to B, if we are sending packets. So once any packet is formed on A side, it will, the whole packet will be a basic addition of different type of these layers. So each layer will contribute something to the final packet. So it's like first it will go from seven to one, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So it goes from seven to one. So from all seven to one, it will have seven to one. It will have all the pack like uh, headers and everything of the uh, individual layers. And then it shall go to B there. What it will do is it will basically extract from one to seven. I hope you understand it. It goes from seven to one. Then you shall, uh, you know, decrypt the packet you can call it decrypt or uh, de-encapsulate right from 7 to 1 so <clears throat> now what does each of this layer do first one is physical physical basically deals with the physical transmission of data so in the end once you are sending packets from a to b for example this is a this is b right the physical layer can be like cables radio waves right it defines basically electrical and physical specifications you can say that the, when the physical data is transmitted from a to b a is a device b is a device it can be router switch whatever so how it travels between these two devices is called physical then you have data link data link provides basically reliable uh, data transfer between two directly connected nodes okay it handles framing mac addresses basically and uh, error detection it does error detection as well right and then you have basically so now we're going from one to seven okay then you have network network layer uh, will basically tell you how the packet will flow okay so physical you know how the packet flows via physical data link helps you do uh, with reliable data transfer between two directly connected nodes network now will help you to make sure how the data is finally traveling so it means routing how the data is finally flowing through the network. Okay. And <clears throat> so, yeah, it is basically routing. Then you can say that we can talk about uh, this thing, uh, transport. 
transport layer basically provides an end to end communication okay between applications it handles segmentation like a, a few other features like uh, reassembly route flow error recovery so here you can say that there are two protocols tcp udp there can be many more there are many more but i what right now i want you to do is i want you to understand right so you can say that for data link you can count as mac mac uh, mac address is belongs to which layer data link layer on network you can say ip okay i'm making it very simple and easy for you guys to remember and understand so once you remember all this it, you will be able to understand easily okay mac address layer 2 ip address okay okay now it belongs to routing so this is how the packet is exactly flowing now what decides the parameter how the packet will flow right not just the routing part but how the communication will be there like it is reliable or not reliable that's tcp and udp now session basically helps you uh, you know helps you manage the session and control the sessions okay and uh, it maintains the establishes and terminates the session then you have presentation now basically it deals with data formatting you can say that so like encryption compression because uh, you know each data will have to be represented in a certain way because the device will not understand simple english right there is a way of presenting it so that happens at presentation layer then you have application layer application layer uh, basically provides the interface between the network applications and the underlying services so for this simple example would be http like when you're trying to access something browse you use http/https from there you see now you get finally in the application layer where you see an interface that works between the network applications and the underlying services okay so this is that this is how you basically explain the uh, you know the osi model okay now what is tcp ip model from osi model we have moved on to tcp ip model but why are we doing that the first question you should ask is why are we moved why did we move so okay now we'll write very little so that you guys remember we'll write seven layers okay and then we have to what is tcp ip model so since we already had the four layers why did like seven layers why are we moving from seven to four what is the need correct so let's draw the osi application presentation session transport network data link physical okay these are this is the osi layer from this we moved on to tcp ip now in tcp ip what do we have right in tcp ip we have link layer internet layer okay transport layer and application layer now i want you guys to relate and understand okay let me draw another one and then i think it will be bit easy for you to understand now we just encapsulated a few things here so from osi uh, we can say that application and presentation layer both these things are clubbed into application layer okay and then we have session layer right so uh, application presentation right uh, this is moved on to application layer then you can say that uh, transport layer similar to basically it's similar to the osi transport layer it's same so transport layer you get here right network layer is the internet layer okay basically addresses ip addressing routing and all of that and data link and physical are moved on to the uh, the last layer that is the link layer right but a lot of places when you read you understand that the application layer itself manages the session so this is why it didn't in, did not include in the first uh, you know while uh, discussing this first so application presentation and session wherein uh, creating the session keys starting establishing termination goes on to application layer network layer uh, sorry transport layer is moved on to transport layer exactly same network has been renamed to uh, internet layer and data link and physical are again rebranded as link layer right so this is the basic difference now what why do we do it right we basically moved on for a better practical model right you can just say the simple answer that we moved on to a better practical model rather than using all these seven layers we just club the layers together right and it also helps us uh, you know with the better practical approach to make sure the traffic flows okay then the basic comparison is simple the tcp ip model is simpler with a few layers and uh, more focused on the protocols 
that are actually implemented in your whole network right the osi layer, layer is a bit more theoretical right it gives you a detailed uh, you know layers wherein exactly what happens where but the tcp ip is basically you know uh, the first one uh, which helped drove the development of the internet right and the osi was developed a much later basically with a, as a more generic reference you can understand it's more theoretical okay and uh, this is a practical approach so i hope this was clear now let's move on to the third this is again very in, uh, important question in terms of your uh, understanding right four layers now move on to what is the difference between tcp and udp now as per osi what we said was application is for application like as an interface presentation wherein as per the uh, devices understanding you present the data right you manipulate and convert it format you know uh, then session helps you session and then we have transport here right transport basically tells you how the data flows and after that like how that you want the data flow reliable or unreliable after that you have network which will help you route the traffic data link connectivity into exact devices and then physically okay now we are moving on to transport layer i explained this because i wanted you to understand better always remember this flow so now why are we using reliable or unreliable so what happens is if you are watching something you are watching a movie or something and even in tv or television or what wherever on the internet and one particular frame frame skips right so you will not be much bothered about it or you are playing a game right you are watching a youtube video so in those cases we use udp okay user data gram protocol okay which is connectionless right unreliable and not ordered right it sends data packets without establishing a connection for example if you have here your a you are trying to watch something from this particular server so if you have traffic flowing in and out like you are watching something and downloading a lot of data but you have to acknowledge also so it's back and forth right now you are watching something and in this time a few particular frames miss you're not bothered right so in this particular scenario you don't exactly make a connection oriented protocol connection with the server okay you just make a connection you make sure that you watch you get to watch that particular video so in this particular scenario you use udp so udp is connectionless right and it is faster as compared to tcp because why because in tcp what happens is you make a connection okay plus in udp you don't even send a lot of acknowledgments right because you don't acknowledge packets you just get you know uh, if you are watching something by the way i'm going back to udp so in udp you just watch it that's it you are watching a lot of videos that's it in but uh, that is why it's faster but in terms of tcp what happens is since you are watching something okay even if uh, you are sort of browsing something let let me uh, clarify you are trying to access some important document present in your company server it's like snt you are watching something from snt okay a uh, browsing some data i'm sorry you browsing some data in this scenario if one particular frame misses then it's a problem because you need to know exactly what's happening so you need to know everything so in this scenario you will use tcp transmission control uh, this thing control protocol so why is transmission control protocol important so for reliable because unreliable we understand faster you know acknowledgments right just watch it frames miss i don't mind right and faster correct so in tcp it's correction oriented reliable and ordered delivery it establishes a connection okay before data transfer uh, a three way connection basically and ensure our packets arrive in the correct sequence and provides error correction also so if there is any error in udp you don't care because you can't do anything in tcp yes you have re, uh, for every packet if if you get any packet for every packet you send an acknowledgement so the server knows so it's very reliable it works through states actually if you want you can click on the i button to understand on the tcp uh, you know handshake process and the tcp states uh, we have a video on both so do watch it but also remember t the difference between tcp and udp is udp unreliable tcp reliable udp faster tcp not faster acknowledgement retransmissions in tcp not in udp okay so this was the third question moving on the fourth one what is an ip address 
Okay. So for this will be very simple. IP address you can say that if you buy any device, any networking device, right, you will get an address along with it. Okay. That address will be your MAC address. If you look at the device, it will have a serial number. Along with it, it will be a MAC address. You see both. So it will be something like basically in this format. Okay. Now this MAC address is your physical address. Sorry, I'm swallowing out the spelling. Yeah, it's physical address. But then you, once you connect, you have already a, cup, a network, right? Once you connect this new particular device in the network, it will also get another IP address, right? another address. This is called an IP. Okay. Internet protocol address. So once you connect in the network, you get an IP address, which is called the internet protocol address, right? And this IP address is not really permanent that I can say because MAC address will never change. But once you move this device from this particular network one, right, to network two. Okay. And this is again, you get another IP, but your MAC will always be same. So <clears throat> this is a good part to understand that MAC address changes with the network sorry ip address changes with the network but mac address will always be same because it comes with the device so in order for the definition ip address is basically a logical address assigned to each device participating in a network in any network that uses internet protocol for communication okay it serves basically two functions host or network interface identification and local addressing because you will have if this slash 21 slash 23 this is 10 network and this is 192 network so you can identify network based on that right so this is one way right this is basically ip address now the second thing the next question is subnetting what is subnetting why is it so important right now let's move on what is subnetting subnetting i call it an art right subnetting is important because subnetting is like a practice of dividing network into smaller logical subnetworks like if you have already a network here right now you can just divide it into smaller networks create small networks here three and then i have two devices there for example right i just divided this network into two particular networks with just the help of ip addressing right so why do we do it by the way, if you want to learn about this, we do have a dedicated video. Click on the I button and you shall, uh, you know, get an in-depth video on subnetting. So why is it important? It improves network on uh, this thing, uh, improved network organization. It makes it simple, simpler to manage. Like I had a network here, which was the whole company. I divided it into HR and IT. I divided it into two teams, right? So this is basically why you know uh, subnetting is important and then enhance security right because now you divided network into two particular parts right so even if there is an attack or something at least your the other part will be unaffected this this topic comes under zero uh, you know zta basically ztns but yeah you can also follow this then you have uh, reduced network congestion because if you are broadcasting something in a network, it will flow into the whole network. But now, since you have two different networks because of subnetting, it flows into two different networks, right? Less congestion and efficient IP address allocation. So this is why, uh, you know, subnetting is very important. Now we are going to basic to advanced. So this is the first part, right? And uh, please do let me know if you want me to discuss, uh, you know, any other questions. We shall definitely do so. And I hope this was helpful. And thank you.